Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching 12 Angry Men. What do you know about this movie? I know this has been highly recommended. Yes. <laughs> um, on pretty much every single courtroom film that we've watched so far. Yeah, it's definitely been recommended a ton for good reason. I have seen this movie maybe twice. It's been, I would say at least a decade, decade and a half since I've seen it. So I don't really remember a lot of the middle parts, but I think I remember the end. So this is just your first time watching. Yes. So other than the fact that it's courtroom, um, I think it's also a 50s film, maybe black and white. Yeah, black and white. I don't think we've had many black and white, probably just Psycho, I think. I think you're right. But I do think that this film is right up your alley. I love like a good detective figuring it out type of film. Yep. So it, since it's a courtroom film, I'm assuming we're gonna be kind of like going through a trial. So I love it. We've watched uh, My Cousin Vinny. We've seen- A Few Good Men. Yes. We recently watched Primal Fear. Yeah, that was a great one too. Um, that would be it. That's okay. That's a good amount of like interesting courtroom drama type stuff. Yeah, and they've all been fantastic. So I'm really excited to watch this. It really has been recommended so much to us. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm excited for you to watch this. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Instagram, Twitch, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. Get right into it. Oh, I have jury duty. I've never done jury duty. I want to so bad. Guilty. I've been on a jury already, and now I have jury duty again coming up. I'm ready. Sign me up. One man is dead. Another man's life is at stake. Your verdict must be unanimous. The death sentence is mandatory in this case. We've done this before. Is it this? It wasn't for the death penalty. Oh, that's <laughs> The jury will now retire. I was going to say, there's no ladies, but the movie's called 12 Angry Men, which I'm guessing <laughs> is these men. Is that the person? Just a kid. That is a lot of pressure. Someone's life is in your hands. I don't know if we've seen anything with Henry Fonda in it so far. Mm -mm. Nice and warm. This is going to be the hottest day of the year. Now, if there's anything you want, I'll be right outside the door. Was this what jury duty was like? Yeah, they just stick you in a room. I thought we might want to vote by ballot. Great idea. Maybe we can get him elected senator. Lots of different personalities. Oh, yeah. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> talk and talk, even when it's an open and shut case like this one. Slap those tough kids down before they start any trouble. I tell you, we were lucky to get a murder case. Well, your horn works, I'll try your lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a broker. I run a messenger service, the Beck and Call Company. Got 37 men working, started with nothing. Not interested. Nope, didn't take the card. I happen to have tickets to that ball game tonight. Yanks and Cleveland. I have a feeling Glass is here is going to be the only one that disagrees. <laughs> I thought we'd sit in order, you know, by jury numbers of one, two, three, four. We'd like to get started. Oh, I'm sorry. Kid kills his father. His dad? Those kids run here. wild up there. Is everyone here? No, they're missing one. I think it's customary to take a preliminary vote. Preliminary vote, huh? Just like your first impression without discussing. This has to be 12 to nothing either way. Now, all those voting guilty, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, window guy. One was voting not guilty. One. <laughs> Eleven guilty. One not guilty. It's gotta be awkward. There's always one. You really think he's innocent? I don't know. The kid's a dangerous killer. You could see it. Do you believe his story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. It's not easy to raise my hand and send a boy off to die without talking about it. Supposing we're wrong. Suppose we uh, do it in five minutes, so what? Ball game doesn't start till eight o'clock. Yeah, he just wants to go to the game. I'm willing to sit for an hour. I heard a pretty good story last night. That is not why we're sitting here. What are we sitting here for? You're on a jury. <laughs> Determining someone's life. Born in a slum, mother dead since he was nine. Just think we owe him a few words, that's all. We don't owe him a thing. I think certain things should be pointed out to this man. The uh, product I work on at the agency. <laughs> Rice bobs. Say, uh, do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, not very many people are taking it seriously. I just think he's guilty. I mean, nobody proved otherwise. The burden of proof's on the prosecution. The old man heard the kid yell out, I'm gonna kill you. Ran to the door, saw the kid running down the stairs. These are facts. Well, that doesn't prove he did it. Yeah, that was just a timeline. He couldn't remember the names of the films he saw or who played in them. His window was right opposite hers across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. Hmm. At night, you can look through the windows of an L track, see what's happening on the other side. Hmm. How come you believe the woman's? She's one of them, too, isn't she? Oh. If you don't have a motive, where's your case, right? I'm angry out of the house. What does that prove? Part of the well, picture provided a motive. So are we not going to see any bit of this trial? This is literally just hearing everything from their perspective. Yep. They don't seem reliable. <laughs> well, look at his record. He's picked up twice for knife fighting. They say he's real handy with a knife. That is a bad record. It's these kids the way they are nowadays. And so everyone just says that. <laughs> I got one. 22 years old. I'm going to make a man out of you if I have to break you. All right. <laughs> I haven't seen him for two years. Hey, great strategy there. Slums are breeding grounds for criminals. I know it and so do you. You can say that again. I've lived in a slum all my life. Cleaning backyards were filled with garbage. Maybe you can still smell it on me. Dang. Let's not be so sensitive. Just going around the room one time. Chaos already. I thought you were all going to try to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you getting so hot about? Calm down, will you? Guy starts shit with everyone. Boy, I don't care what you do. Peculiar feeling about this trial. I mean, nothing is that positive. They know the answers already. It's also possible for a lawyer to be just plain stupid, isn't it? <laughs> Those two witnesses were the entire case for the prosecution. People make mistakes. Could they be wrong? Yeah, I don't think they were purposely lying, but they could be wrong. This isn't an exact science. That's right, it isn't. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> what about the switch knife? The people who haven't talked yet, shouldn't we go in order? Be quiet a second, will you? Poor glasses. Say, could you bring us the knife? He said punch. There's a difference between a slap and a punch. Details matter. The only one of its kind he had ever had in stock. Am I right so far? You bet he is. Now, what happened to the switch knife? He claims that it fell through a hole in his pocket. Mmm, that's weak. A stranger on the street found it and then killed his dad with it? What actually happened is this. <laughs> they just handed it to him? <laughs> it's not even in a bag? No, there's no fingerprints back then. He even remembered to wipe the knife clean of fingerprints. Oh. <laughs> Somebody else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's just possible. It's a very unusual knife. Was that knife in his dad? Yeah, I think so. And I say it's not possible. Shut up. Oh! Where did that come from? <laughs> I bought that in a little pawn shop just two blocks from the boy's house. It's against the law. <laughs> Suppose you tell me what it proves. Anyone could have that knife. It's possible, but not very probable. That was a huge... <laughs> What's interesting about it? Oh, I just thought it was interesting. It is interesting. Vote by secret written ballot. There are 11 votes for Gilly. Take in a Gilly verdict to the judge right now. I think he got glasses. I mean, the first vote was public for everyone, you know? Yeah. So there's a but lot of people were like looking around like Right, that's what I'm saying. There was a lot of pressure. The end. <laughs> Guilty. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Not guilty. It goes on. Who was it? Come on, I wanna know. Brother, you really are something. Why don't you drop a quarter in this collection box? Very excitable, sit down. Excitable? You bet I'm excitable! This guy's gonna have a heart attack. What made you change your vote? He didn't change his vote. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so he gambled for support, and I gave it to him. Yeah. I want to hear more. You have no right to leave this room. I hear you. He never will. <laughs> a good way to put it. I'm telling about in an ad agency when a point like this is recent to me. Hey, everyone, I'm telling a story. Run it up the flagpole and see if anyone salutes it. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Didn't mean to get nasty. Sure. Brad, you're not one of those less these emotional appeals influence them. <laughs> Laughs, drinks, jokes, tricks, you know? That was good. Hey, what are you getting out of this, kicks? Or did somebody bump you on the head one time and you haven't gotten over it? This kid is guilty, pal. We're gonna all get sore throats if we keep it up, you know? What difference does it make if you get it here at the ball game? No difference at all. It's not taking anyone's shit. Those are also interesting 
towel dispenser. Yeah, like turns... recycles it. Yeah. Oh, he's guilty for sure. Should have been done already. Beats working. <laughs> Trying all different tactics to convince him. Yeah. If you're wasting your time, you gotta wrap it up. Supposing you were the one that was on trial. Working man, my boss does a suppose. That's why you're not a boss. Supposing you talk us all out of this and the uh, kid really did knife his father, huh? Playing tic-tac-toe. This isn't a game. Someone's life. Did you see him? A nerve. Who does he think he is? All right, I cannot stand this guy. Yeah. Has anyone here ever lived near the L-Tracks? Noise is almost unbearable. You can hardly hear yourself think. He says he heard the boy say, I'm going to kill you. But the train was passing. Right. With the L roaring past his nose, it's not possible he could have heard it. Mm -hmm. Some rumbling. Why should he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention, maybe. <laughs> I talks like that to an old man really ought to get stepped on, you know? Ooh. You say stuff like that to him again, I'm going to lay you out. Oh, damn. Same if his jacket was split under the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> he was dragging his left leg. Super observant. I think I know this man better than anyone here. Perhaps he made himself believe he heard those words. What do you know about it? He's an old man. This phrase, how many times have all of us used it? Junior, you do that once more and I'm going to kill you. Well, I say that all the time. <laughs> Anybody says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. Do you really think the boy'd shout out a thing like that so the whole neighborhood could hear him? <laughs> Much too bright for that. Bright? He don't even speak good English. He doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. It's making progress. He was uh, quite appointed. Could mean he didn't want the case or he, he resented being appointed. Brings him nothing, no money, no glory, not even much chance of winning. Yeah. If he really had killed his father, why would he come back? Wouldn't he be afraid of being caught? That's a pretty big point from the beginning. The boy knew the knife could be identified as the one he had just bought. He finally calmed down, he realized he had left his knife there. Or he ran out in a state of panic because he just saw his father get murdered. What side are you on? I'm simply asking questions. I bet he figured nobody'd find the body the next day. The boy certainly must have heard the scream, so he knew that somebody saw something. In his state of panic, he may not have heard the scream. Perhaps it wasn't very loud. Possible. Maybe all of those things happened, but maybe they didn't. I never saw so much time spent on nothing. It only takes a second. Yeah. <laughs> I vote uh, not guilty. And what is this? Love your underprivileged brother week or something? I don't have to defend my decision to you. I what have. reasonable doubt? That's nothing but words. Here, look at this. <laughs> it's just the whole point. That's not the knife. Don't you remember? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Did the old man say he ran to the door? Ran? Walked? What's the difference? Dude was... Was limping. Mr. Foreman, I'd like to see a diagram of the apartment. Yeah, there's no way he would make it to the front door at the same time that the kid would make it to the front door. Especially with a limp. He was an old man. Not gonna be positive about anything. <laughs> Damn. Walked right into that one. Why don't you stop making smart remarks all the time? Oh, damn, this guy's ready to throw down with anyone. He says he crossed to the door and walked down the hall 15 seconds after the body hit the floor. 43 feet? That's a long way. 15 seconds. You think he could have done it? For an old man who had to stroke, it is a long walk. What are we waiting for? Well, I want to wait till the second hand reaches 60. <laughs> Come on, speed it up. He walked twice as fast as that. Lock, door, stop. 41 seconds. Uh, Ooh, that's a big difference. You're letting him slip through our fingers. You as executioner? I'm one of them. You're a sadist. I'll kill him. You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? Um. <laughs> this guy's walked himself into so many disappointments. What are you looking at? <laughs> so the noise, the knife, the time. Even, Nothing's lining up. Yeah, now. even the same. What are you so polite about? For the same reason you're not. <laughs> Where it was brought up. Give it a much thought, but let's throw it out on the stoop and see if the cat licks it up. <laughs> don't you ever sweat? No, I don't. Dang, I wish I had that. 
Call off your jury numbers. One. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Not guilty. Got glasses. Guilty. Not guilty. Oof. Not guilty. Six. Even. The vote is now six to six. Sick and tired of facts. You can twist them any way you like. That's exactly the point. <laughs> that man gets on my... Ooh. Want a drink of water? No, no, thanks. Sir, I think you need some water. You know what I mean? Loud mouth. <laughs> hey, what is it with this fan here? Oh. <laughs> Must be on the same switch with the lights. <laughs> hey. Two points. You want to not jam the fan? <laughs> right, just got it working. Pretty excitable person. I mean, where does he come off calling me? Oh, you are an excitable person? You're just trying to bait me. He did an excellent job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, they're all alike. Before they can take a deep breath, they're telling us how to run the show, huh? Jeez. The boy couldn't remember the names of the movies he saw. Question by the detectives in the kitchen of his apartment. The body of his father was lying on the floor in the bedroom. Jeez. Seeing his dad dead. My wife and I went to the movie. What did you see? The Scarlet Circle. What was the second feature? I'll tell you in a minute. The, uh... <laughs> You're not even under great stress. I'd never uh, heard of him before, and you weren't under an emotional stress, were you? He is now! Look at his head! Sweating. I think the point is made. He's got those cough drops. We're all gone, my friend. <laughs> the stab wound and how it was made. The downward angle of it, you know. Now, the boy was five feet, seven inches tall. Yeah, downward. That's a difference of seven inches. What's it all about? <laughs> Look at the angle. Down and in. I can see that angle. Yeah. He'd never use it like this. See, you lose too much time switching hands. Mm -hmm. Ah. Underhanded. Wouldn't handle it any other way. Yeah. Think he could have made the kind of wound that killed his father? No. Wow. Yeah, him getting in knife fights in his past actually helped out. Were you in the room when the father was killed? Were you? Grumpy? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> I changed my vote to not guilty. <laughs> He's just tired of being here. That's not an answer. What kind of a man are you? I don't uh, think he's guilty. Another vote call for him. Who's that? Ooh, got the Marketing. ad. Marketing. Nine. Oh. One, two, three. She's got the two angry guys in the sweater left. Look, you know how these people lie? It's born in them. Human life don't mean as much to them as it does to us. I've known a couple who are okay. A couple who are okay? What's going on here? There's a danger here. No one's listening, old man. Sit down and don't open your mouth again. Wherever you run into it, prejudice always obscures the truth. The evidence given by the woman across the street is the most important testimony. She could look out while lying down. I mean, I still think that's super unreliable through the L train. You can throw out all the other evidence. The woman saw him do it. What else do you want? All right, I'm changing my vote. Someone before mentioned 7 o'clock. Don't you feel well? You made a gesture that reminded me of something. Why were you rubbing your nose like that? Is it because of your eyeglasses? Those two deep impressions the size of your nose. Does lady wear glasses? The woman had those same marks. Yep. She was not sleeping with her glasses. I've been going over her face in my mind. This guy was so observant of everyone. Heavy makeup, dyed hair, no glasses. Strange, but I didn't think about it before. Do you wear glasses when you go to bed? No one wears eyeglasses to bed. Right. To identify a person 60 feet away without glasses. Pretty hard. Don't you think the woman might have made a mistake? No, it's not possible. Why? Is it possible? <laughs> not guilty. <laughs> Back to not guilty. And he might have got sweaty guy. You think he's guilty? <laughs> they broke him. Yeah, they really broke that guy. <laughs> no. I'm convinced. 11 to 1. One angry man. <laughs> well, you said we could throw out all the other evidence. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. You're alone. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. It's my right. It's your right. No pressure. <laughs> well, what do you want? I say he's guilty. Just stubborn. But you can't prove it! 
You can't prove he did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that's it. That's the whole case. <laughs> no one's convinced. Rotten kids, you work your life out. No. Something a little deeper. Not guilty. Finally. <laughs> Not guilty. Man, that was crazy. It all just started with one guy who was like, I'm not convinced. Yeah, he's like, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> little peace offering. Yeah, he does not deserve that. <laughs> What's your name? Davis. My name's McCardle. Well, so long. <laughs> well, goodbye. And it even stopped raining. Just in time for the baseball game. <laughs> All right, that was 12 Angry Men. What'd you think? That was great. I loved kind of the simplicity of the film. Super simple. I mean, it's just 12 dudes. You don't even know their names really in one room. Yep, exactly. Everything that we're gathering is just from their perspective and what they picked up from the case. We right. didn't get to see any of the trial. And so we're sitting here and we're learning about each of these guys, learning about their prejudices, learning about little details that they pick up, their family lives, like all of the yeah. things that make up this jury and why they feel the way they do about the defendant. There's some people who had plenty of time. There's some people who just wanted to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Their jobs played a role. I mean, exactly like you said, everything about them shaped how they kind of felt and digested the whole trial. Yeah. I thought it was just really clever. Because it's so simple, we're just paying attention to all the little details. And I thought it was cool kind of how things were brought up. You know, when the original juror who thinks that he's not guilty, he is the one that brings out the knife. Yeah, I mean, I love this movie. I'm super glad that you were able to see it. I don't know how this translates too much into a reaction type of film because it is very simple and it is mostly just dialogue. There are a handful of like really great reveals. And the first one that really kicks everything off is that knife moment. Yes. I love that he was just so invested in this kid's life that he was willing to, you know, go out on a walk the night before. And he goes into that pawn shop and he buys this knife illegally <laughs> um, in order to kind of prove a point. Yeah, I mean, this is no light situation. This is life or death for someone. So if you were on that opposite side, you would want the jurors to be very invested on all of the details and the facts. And he's definitely the one that demonstrates the most interest in the case because he actually took the time to walk through the neighborhood itself. Yeah, and we just have so many different guys of different ages, like you said, different jobs. We did see like multiple people have kind of prejudice against this kid because of where he grew up and his, I guess, ethnicity, his background. Right. And then you're seeing, you know, this last juror, the final guy who can't give up and he finally says not guilty. This all stems from his relationship with his own son and the, I guess, non-relationship that they have now. Right, just the animosity he has towards children of the day. Every little detail was so, so clever and everyone was so different in this room. Yeah. Um, I said at the very beginning of the reaction that I have served on a jury before and the way that they pick a jury, every little thing matters, I think. Oh yeah, are you legally allowed to talk about? I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to talk about the case in particular, but I would say that my jury was absolutely stacked for what the situation was for about. the case yeah. by the prosecutor <laughs> <laughs> stood no chance <laughs> it's very interesting to see kind of all the details because on the jury that i was on there was very much similarities between almost the entire jury. oh really wow and that's what i mean when i'm saying it's stacked but this you really did have people from all different backgrounds and all different jobs clearly this is a bunch of men that are all kind of around the same age. A few older people. Yeah, a couple of older. And then we had people that were brought up in different upbringings, which I feel like was extremely important. Absolutely. So I'm not going to say that this was like a crazy variety of people on this jury, <laughs> but their differences really did make all of the difference. Yeah. I mean, you see it play through everything. Uh, you know, the old man who understands how the other old man would feel. And he was like, I would understand this guy better than anyone else here. The individual who wore the glasses, 
who was so sure that the woman seeing him was the biggest thing that he couldn't get across. So obviously breaking that for him is more important than someone else who wouldn't wear glasses. You know, the individual who said that he grew up from the slums and saw the knife fights and his own personal experiences of how to operate a switchblade mm -hmm. and stuff like everyone played an important role in this movie. It's only an hour and a half movie. You get through a lot of material yeah. and without much effort, you really get to understand the personalities of everyone at this table, which is incredibly impressive. Yeah, and we talked about, we don't know really anybody's names. We got the last two guys' names right at the very end of the film, but they're literally just juror number whatever. Yeah. Um, they're sitting at that table in order. I mean, I kind of made up my own nicknames for them. <laughs> you know, glasses. Sweaty. Sweaty, who was the only guy who wasn't sweating. But I mean, because it wasn't important. Their names weren't important. No. It was just all about them kind of coming to terms with what they needed to make sure that there was not reasonable doubt. And all of these people were coming in and like, oh, no, I I am doubting this now. Right. What's important in the trial, you're not trying to prove innocence. You're just trying to prove that there's a reasonable doubt that they're not guilty or guilty. You're innocent until proven guilty. Correct. <laughs> so it, it's the prosecutor's job to prove that without any doubt, they're guilty. Right. And if there is a little bit of doubt, you can't convict. Yeah, you can't move forward with that. And especially in a case like this, this is literally somebody's life. It's not even just murder, but the fact that they did also say that he was gonna be- Electrocuted. Yeah, killed yeah. without a doubt if he was found guilty. Yeah, the stakes are incredibly high. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I pointed out that wouldn't you want people to spend a little bit of time or at least a little bit of a conversation, even though you spend six days. And I think that's really interesting aspect of the movies that you don't see those six days mm -hmm. so you don't get the biases or the point of view from the prosecutor or the defender you just get what the jurors were able to process yeah and even throughout the movie they start to pick up on stuff that they didn't see important or they didn't think of even people who had strong connections to certain pieces of evidence it's like oh wait a second like the switchblade guy again how many times did they probably discuss that blade Yet it wasn't until actually going through a discussion that he was like, actually, you would hold it like this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the most impressive things about the movie is just the systematic breakdown. It wasn't like, oh, I think he's not guilty. And then he was able to just kind of convince everyone. It was a slow burn of breaking through these people one point after another until you eventually got to the end. And it was just impossible for anyone to deny that there was enough doubt. You know, maybe there were still some people who thought he was guilty, but there was enough doubt that you're like, well, I can't, there, it's not for sure. And the breakdown, like you're talking about from person to person to person, I like that it wasn't just our original not guilty guy that convinced everyone. Like everyone started to convince themselves and convince each other. And it started kind of spreading across the room versus one guy, because even he was like, well, I'm not saying he's not guilty. I'm just saying- Let's talk about it. Yeah, I don't know. And for in order for him to say and open this conversation for more discussion, he just needed to go against the grain and vote not guilty. Even if in the end he was like, oh, you convinced me. He's very, guilty. yeah, very early on in the movie, he had that ultimatum or whatever, where he was like, look, if all of you vote guilty, yep. I'll say guilty. That was like 20 minutes into the movie. Yeah, that was very early. So he wasn't trying to be stubborn or, you know, just for the sake of being stubborn. He very much just wanted to get the point across like, hey, maybe let's just talk about it for a little bit. I know that this is, it's a jury of your peers and that's just the way that the American justice system works. But it is scary when you think about the fact that if that guy hadn't been there, all of those guys were like ready to get out of that room. And they were just like, yeah, we don't need to discuss this, guilty. Yep, someone would have died being innocent or who knows? I mean, the interesting thing about this movie too is it's not like at the end you are given the truth or something. No. It's not like someone- I mean, you can't, nobody can give you the truth. Yeah, technically open-ended, but you just do the best that you can. Yeah, I mean, that kid's not gonna be sentenced to death, but I mean, what if we watch this entire movie and he actually did kill his dad and then you just have 
some murderous <laughs> child out on the woods. It would have been great if at the end you see him like running down the street and just stab someone like, oh fuck, we let him go. But going back to just breaking everything down, I mean, it starts with the knife reveal, which is a great reveal. Mm -hmm. And I don't really remember the order too much, but the noise with the L train, thinking of how loud it must be that if a train is going by, the timeline doesn't match up very well with being able to hear screams. The old man getting to the front door in 15 seconds and kind of doing that slow limp. And even when they're like, oh, he was faster than that and he sped up quite a bit, it was still like three times as long as what he said. Not even close. Uh, you know, again, with the lady with the glasses turning over in bed to see someone in a split second through the L train, you're not gonna like wake up, turn over and throw your glasses on and be like, oh wow, look, a murder in like the course of two seconds or something. Yeah. Even down to the details of the extremely observant old man about the frayed jackets and the dyed hair for the woman mm -hmm. and the new clothes, it's like, if people aren't paying attention, you're gonna miss all this. And even him, he voted guilty right away. Yeah, you know, there's only two witnesses in this trial and I like that their testimonies didn't like corroborate oh, each corro other's- Corroborate? Yeah, each other's stories. Yeah, when you combine them together, you start finding holes. Yeah, because if what if that man had never said that he heard anything? Then you just have the woman saying that she saw it happen. And it's like, if you heard that in a trial and all of a sudden you're just like, well, there's a witness that saw it, you might be more inclined to be like, there's a witness. But the fact that they started breaking things down with the guy hearing it yeah. and then bringing in the L train and all the other things, then it's like, wait a minute, we need to look at her too. Yeah, I mean, this movie is jam packed with detail mm -hmm. and just creating these characters and forming their opinions. It's super impressive. Even the amount of times where characters walk themselves in to their own like defeat. <laughs> yeah. The angry, excitable guy who even was like, I'm not excitable or something like that. And the later was like, I am excitable. <laughs> and, I mean, he walked himself into the I'll kill you moment, which was great. And all of the 11 people were just like staring at him. He's like, whoa, what do you mean? Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. I didn't mean that. He even had another moment with the uh, talking about the old guy and being like, well, why do we care about the old guy? He's an old guy. He doesn't know anything. He's confused. Why would we listen? It's like, you're- Yes, <laughs> you're proving their point. Yeah. The amount of details though in this, like I feel like that's what made this such a good movie. Obviously besides all the characters in it, but the amount of detail, it just, this is definitely, I feel like would be a movie that's rewatchable. I would love to kind of get into more of like the breakdown of each person. I really enjoyed it. I thought this was a great movie and I can see this being kind of like a stem for a lot of jury trial type films. Oh yeah, I mean, this came out in I think 1957, I believe. And this is just a staple for how you can make something so incredibly entertaining and brilliant yet very, very simple, like mm -hmm. you said. Great movie, I really enjoyed watching it again, and I'm excited that you were able to experience it for the first time. Yeah, no, I'm so glad we watched this. I, I had a great time with it. Yeah, we love these courtroom stuff or the juror stuff in this case, so any recommendations for more stuff like this, bring it on for sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> Detective. Yeah, I didn't get to play detective because I knew everything going on. I was like squirming in my seat to be like, oh man. So hopefully I didn't spoil anything throughout, but I think no, I did okay. No, I think we were good. But <laughs> love these types of films, would love more recommendations for them. But thank you guys for recommending this film because this was, this was great. Yeah. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.